Hi, I'm Kristen. And I'm Rich. And this is Utah, Utah Fish, Fish Finder. Finder. So Rich, tell me about this pond you were talking about. We're there. We are? This is Sunset Ponds. It's right in the middle of a subdivision okay. in South Sandy. All right. And that's the beauty of it. We're in, look, we're in the middle of nowhere. Can't find it. <laughs> it's like we're in the forest. Well, but, hey, let's go see. Let's find it. Well, here we are at Sunset Ponds. What do you think, Kristen? Well, it really is secluded and beautiful, just like you said. And I also noticed a sign um, down the trail there that said kids 12 and under fish without a license. So that's pretty ideal for the family just to come out here real quick and take a quick fishing hour or so. Um, but tell me what we are fishing for today in this pond. Well, there's trout, yeah? bluegill. There are some other varieties similar to, they, they call them panfish, oh. like a pumpkin seed, whatever that okay. is. And uh, then we have catfish. Okay. That's great, yeah. You actually saw a little boy that caught a big one down the way there, so. Huge. Yeah. So we're gonna see if we can catch a uh, fish today with what kind of bait? We're gonna be using worms. We'll put it under a bobber or a bubble so mm -hmm. it'll just hang a little bit under the surface. Okay. And uh, all of those fish like worms. Let's hope so, because we need to catch us some fish today. Yeah. something a little bigger than this. This is a bait fish. <laughs> We're back with Utah Fish Finder and I found the lovely Monique who is fishing here at Sunset Pond and they have had a lot of success here, right? I think, well, she just got a bite. <laughs> what brings you guys out to Sunset Pond? Uh, we just live down the street. You just live down the street? You like, you come here a lot? Oh yeah. Really? Every day. And so what um, bait are you using today? Because I know you guys are having some luck. We just worms right now. Worms? Yeah. All right, we're here with Utah Fish Finder and Mike. So what, what do you like about Sunset Pond? What keeps you coming here? Um, I like the back pond because it's shaded. Right. It's, you can get out of the sun. Okay. Uh, True. This, this bigger pond has the bigger fish. Yeah, it does. And you've, you've had some luck today with fish. What, what is the bait you're using? Uh, using night crawlers and salmon eggs. Night crawlers, see? That's a pro tip. Well, thank you very much for talking with us you're today, welcome. Mike. I appreciate it. We're going to take you back to the show. Okay, here at uh, Sunset Ponds, we've moved to the South Pond. Right. We've cast out. Yep, we got our lines in, so we we're hoping to catch us a big catfish like our little friend did earlier. Oh, he caught a monster. It must have been six pounds. Right. So, and he released it, so it's still in there. Yeah, so. you can still come and get it yourself and take it home. Now, this South Pond has some real nice advantages to it. Right. There's a nice pathway with lots of benches to sit and fish in the shade, so that's nice. Yeah, the North Pond, there's not a lot of places to fish from. Right. There's a lot of trees around it. This one is this really This one's nice. a little bit better, yeah. So, yeah, this is nice. They're both nice, though, but this one has a little more access. Yeah. So, let's see how we do. Yeah, let's wish us luck. <laughs> We're here at Sunset Pond, Utah Fish Finder, and I found a couple of fishermen here, or anglers, like we like to call them. This is Logan. <laughs> this is Brooks. And uh, what brings you guys to Sunset Pond today? Um, we used to live right down the street, so this is kind of our childhood fishing spot. Is it? So yeah. from what age? Since came out of the womb, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you like about this particular area? Um, I like the variety of fish. We caught some bass and catfish and catch the little sunfish all the time. Yeah. What are you using today for bait? Um, we're just using some lures and spinners. Yeah. So this is the little yeah. spinner he has here. Yeah. And let's see what Brooks has over here. He's got some power bait. Today. He's got some power bait. Yeah. Well, well, thank you guys so much for interviewing with me. I appreciate it. I hope you guys thank catch you. lots of big fish. We're going to take a break. We'll see you when we come back. Fads and Fashions, Utah's most unique boutique, located in the Valley Fair Mall.
We're here with the uh, Utah Fish Finder, and we found you guys angling here at Sunset Pond. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your name? I'm Scott. And what's your name? Kaden. How old are you? Five. Five? Oh, that's a good age. So you've been having fun here. Have you caught any fish? Yep. I've caught some fish. That's great. You know that bluegill like worms because they just bit on one. Yeah. And then the catfish like worms. So uh, where is your grandfather from? Um, North Carolina. North Carolina. I got some relatives in North Carolina. That's a good place to, to live, huh? And fish. And fish? <laughs> well, it's been good talking to you and I hope you catch a lot more fish. I probably will. <laughs> I bet you will. Okay, thank you. And then a bobber maybe okay. a foot away from that. All right. Well, I know they're biting out here because we did have somebody catch a fish earlier. And I, I think you said you saw some people yeah. catching. Yeah. So they are biting. I don't know if they're liking the worms. We're using worms too. Maybe better be changing it, huh? Yeah, we need to change that up. <laughs> well, Hopefully hey. you're good luck. Well, I try. <laughs> thanks for interviewing sure. with me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And I really hope you catch something. And I Great. hope we do too. Great. Hey, thanks guys. See you guys. Well, caught myself another little tiny bluegill today. They seem to like me. I'm going to put him back. Right now I'm about to change my lure out because I'm not having much luck with the one I'm using. This is a Shady Creek lure. It's actually called the Bantam Bloodlust. And it's really good for trout. Reason being is trout like a lot of movement. And this lure, it has the movement, but they also like color. So the red beads will draw them to it. And this is sure to catch me a nice big trout right here. We're gonna take a break and go to the tackle box. We'll see you when we come back. Welcome to the Rokoto Peruvian restaurant in West Valley, Utah where the best rotisserie chicken is in town. Delicious Peruvian food and low prices. Our natural chicken and our recipes are made fresh daily. We marinate our chicken with herbs and spices. Brown and juicy on the outside, perfection on the inside. To learn more, call or visit the Rokoto Peruvian restaurant today. Welcome back to Utah Fish Finder. In the tackle box today, we're going to be talking about catfish rigs. These are kind of important because catfish are a particular kind of beast that we go after. The kind of rigs that we have, though, can be kind of complicated sounding. You know, you've got a drop shot rig, and you've got a Carolina rig, and a Michigan rig, and a Lindy rig, and a three-way slip rig. And I think the list kind of goes on. Basically, though, there are only two kinds of rigs. And so that makes things a lot easier. Now, what I'm showing here, we've got a little weight on the end of a snap swivel. And a lot of people will just attach some bait to it. And hopefully it floats so it's not on the bottom. But that's not always the case. Now. A better method is when a catfish picks up your bait, you don't want him to feel the weight on the end of it. And so you've kind of got to be careful. An easy way to do it is to use a bubble. If you use a bubble, then you have it so your line goes through the bubble. Let me 
See if I can demonstrate that. If I have my bubble on my line, that means that when a uh, fish picks up the bait, he's going to just pull the line and he's not going to feel any weight on it. That's really good because he's less likely to spit the bait out. Catfish will do that because they're smart. They can figure out there's something wrong with this bait. Now you've got another advantage. If a catfish pulls on your line, you're going to see your line start to straighten and you know he's got the bait in his mouth. And so that's a great time to set your hook. Most of the things are based around this. You know, you can have different kind of terminal tackle. Uh, instead of using a bubble, and especially if you want more weight, there are various sizes of barrel weights. Let me show you this one. You can see the hole in the middle of it, and your line goes through that. You can put one or the, uh, more of these. They have big uh, weights, and so that will give you some casting power, whereas if you have a bubble full of water, it may not be as heavy. Uh, the only advantage with this is that when it's on the bottom, it doesn't weigh anything because most of it's water and it's the same weight as its surroundings. The problem is if there's any wind blowing your line, it can drag this. And if you're in a stream or something where there's some current, it can move your line around too. So there's pros and cons both ways. Now the other way of doing it is to do the, uh, let me get my little weight off of here, and you use what's called a three-way swivel. And you can see that there are three places to put things on. And what you want to do is you want to put this on your line like this, and then whatever weight you want, and you'd put your weight down this side, and then the swivel that sticks out to the side, what you would do is you would put your leader on that with your bait on it. And the uh, one advantage that you have with this is when you pull your line out of the water, it's a lot less likely that your line is going to wrap around your main line. That's a real problem if you have both your weight and your leader in the same place. And so this is a three-way thing, and that's what a lot of these are called. Okay, now you got to put something on the end of it. And for bait, you got some good choices. My favorite is for uh, using worms. Worms are easy to get. You can dig them in your, up in your backyard. You can go to the grocery store and get them. You can go to a fishing place and be able to get them. So... Uh, they're easy, and catfish love worms. Now, if you want big catfish, you're probably going to want to upsize your bait a little bit. I would suggest at least using a whole worm. Maybe you could use several worms. Test it out. See how it works. Another great bait uh, is uh, using some sort of stink bait. Uh, one of the disadvantages is that it stinks, and you get it all over your hands, and then... Nobody wants to be around you. Uh, so that's a possibility, and you can even make your own. Uh, another possibility is using chicken livers. You'll hear people talking about that. The biggest problem is they don't like to stay on a hook, and so you've got to bait up frequently. Now, one of the things that seems to be a favorite is using hot dogs. And so you just get the wieners and cut off little pieces of hot dog, and you use those. And they seem to be quite attractive to catfish. And so that's one bait to use. Now, while we were talking with some anglers and watching some big catfish being brought in, we discovered another bait. And usually where there's catfish, there's also carp. And carp tends to be a bloody kind of fish. When you cut it, uh, you get a lot of blood from it. And I think that's why carp would make a good bait, because it would have a lot of smell, and that blood would put the odor in the water and help attract catfish.
Those are the things that I think will really help you in being able to catch catfish. Thanks for joining me here in the Tackle Box, and now let's get back to the show. Well, this is kind of interesting. I've got some little bait stealer bluegill in there. They must be that size. And my line is hitting the water and they're coming to investigate. Well, let's see what happens. We'll be right back for more Utah Fish Finder. Welcome to the Rokoto Peruvian Restaurant in West Valley, Utah, where the best rotisserie chicken is in town. Delicious Peruvian food and low prices. Our natural chicken and our recipes are made fresh daily. We marinate our chicken with herbs and spices. Brown and juicy on the outside, perfection on the inside. To learn more, call or visit the Rokoto Peruvian restaurant today. We're here at Sunset Pond with Utah Fish Finder and Jeff. And Jeff is fishing with uh, his family today. Tell me, what brought you out to Sunset Pond? Well, I just live right over here, so I, I yeah. come over here all, all the time, every day. You like it? I love it. This is the second time I've been here, I like it too. That's nice. I know you guys had some luck. Yeah. What are you using for bait? I use salmon eggs or uh, night crawlers. Okay. And tell me your craziest fish story. Um, I've kind of caught a turtle. Uh, I didn't really catch it because it broke off bringing it in. Right. My craziest story is, is I got a big carp the other day and it broke my pole off. Oh my gosh, so, how big was it? I don't know. It, it, right as it bit it, it broke. Crazy. It broke the, the front end of the pole. Right there? Yep, just broke, snapped it right off. Oh my off. gosh. So we had to go get a, had to go get a, new, a new pole, which yeah. I like Shakespeare poles. Okay. So I, I use these all the time, so I went back and got another one. And That's crazy. We'll see if we get a, another, another, another one. Some more big fish. Yep. Well, well, thank you very much You're for interviewing with me. And I want to just give you this Fads and Fashion coupon. <laughs> Uh, I'm wearing one of their designs here. They have really nice stuff for everyone. They have trinkets and treasures next to them. They have NASCAR, they have uh, Elvis, Coca-Cola, all different kinds of like stuff there. So go check them out. Okay. Thanks again. Thank Appreciate you. It. Well, I found myself one of these nice benches here at Sunset Pond, so I'm taking a load off. And while I take a break, you guys enjoy the kitchen segment. I'm Rich. And I'm Kristen. And we're in the kitchen for a Utah fish finder. That's right. And today we are doing something really special. We're broiling up some Parmesan fish that takes about 10, 15 minutes total to cook. So it should be fun. It should be. Yeah. And tasty. And tasty. <laughs> okay. We have our fish on some aluminum foil in a broiling pan and we've sprayed it with vegetable spray so it That's won't right. stick. One thing you got to be careful of when you broil is you got to keep a close eye on it because right. you can burn things really easy. That's right. I've had... I've done it. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done uh, candied yams covered with marshmallows. Right. And I open it up. Burn and bring the it top. It's flames. <laughs> exactly. So you don't want that to happen. Yeah, it, it doesn't take much. Okay, now we're going to mix up a uh, topping to go on it. We've got a uh, half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Yep, right there. Dump that right in. And then we got a half a stick of butter. Right? Softened. Softened. Uh, As you can mix. see, see it's nice and soft. Yeah. 
Then we got three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Whip that right in there. And uh, juice from a lemon. Right. And the last thing is, what's in this little concoction right here, Rich? Oh, we got a, a nice little mixture. We've got dried basil, okay. black pepper, okay. onion powder, celery salt. All right. And that sounds like a good combination to me. Yum. <laughs> and we're going to put this on top of our uh, uh, fish and then broil it again. Okay, now you want to leave it in the oven on broil for about two minutes. Keep an eye on it and then take it out. Right. It'll be nice and perfect. It should be nice and white as fish are when okay. you cook them. They turn you white. You can see it's starting to cook. See, right there. And very nice. We're going to take these and flip them over. Exactly. See that look nice and white. Okay. The pink is going to be gone when it's all completely cooked. It'll be white. Another two For minutes. About two minutes. And then we'll take it out and spread our stuff on it. Right. You ready for the toppings? We're ready for the toppings. This, look at this, yum. Yeah, just. Oh yeah, baby. Smear that over. Okay. That looks so good, Rich. Making me so hungry. <laughs> A little more around the edges. You got it. That'll do it? That'll do it. Okay, boss. Okay, now this goes back in the oven. Man, I'm getting ready for this. So it's gonna be delicious. Yes. So that's another what? How many minutes you see? Two or three. About two or three minutes more uh -huh. for the toppings to you know, get brown and the, the cheese to melt and yeah. everything to kind of get cohesive, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. And then we get to eat. Yeah. And that's the advantage of being in the kitchen. That's right. Is... And being a fish finder because we get to eat yeah. fish, which is my favorite. Uh, let me just look at it. Part of the thing is you always want to keep an eye on when you're broiling. Right. And... I hear it sizzling. It sounds good. I know that's a thing. Sounds good is a thing. <laughs> it's sizzling. It's kind of melted all over. Oh, but broiling is really good for you as opposed to frying uh -huh. because there's no excess fat when you're broiling. So it's very healthy, which I like. Yeah. I'm a very healthy eater. There are some things See the muscles? I, I like frying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's starting to brown. Let's it's give it close. about 30 All the seconds edges are more. getting. Brown, I can see. I can smell it now. Yeah, it smells really good. That's a good sign. Now you can tell we're getting ready here. We got our plates out. Yep. A spatula. Getting ready to eat. Ooh, doga. Oh, good. looking good. Look at that. Oh, Rich. That's a beautiful sight. I mean, this is a beautiful sight. There you go. Yeah. One for you. One for me. And one for you. One for me. I love being a Utah fish finder. <laughs> Oh, that looks great. It does. We're going to take a bite of it right now. But this time, blow it, because the last time when we did the fish tacos, I burned my mouth. <laughs> oh, and the fish is so tender. Mmm. That almost melts in your mouth. It does melt in your mouth, and the, it tastes delicious. The caramelized um, ingredients, you know, the Parmesan and all the ingredients, they are absolutely delicious. That was a good recipe you chose. Mm -hmm. Very delicious. Today we've had broiled Parmesan fish, and it is delicious and really easy to fix. That's right, it really is. And we want to thank you for joining us in the kitchen today. We loved having you. This is Kristen. And I'm Rich. And we'll be right back with more Utah Fish Finder. Hey, Rich, I bet I can cast farther than you. I think so, huh? Want to find out? <laughs> Let's find out. Let's do it. Uh, neither of us won. Mike has a very unique fish story to tell us. Let's hear it. I went fishing out at Steed's Pond out in Clearfield. Okay. And I threw my line out and I actually caught a fish off of somebody else's line and I pulled the line in I had two fish on it at the same time. Okay, Siamese fish. That's crazy. <laughs> and it wasn't even on my hook. Well, while you're here, why don't we just close the show? Good idea. Okay. We had a great time here. It's like being out off in the country somewhere by it yourself. Is. Sunset Pond is really beautiful and I caught two little tiny baby fish that I put back. They're too small to take home. She's way ahead of me on this one. It's all right, Rich. At least we got out here and had some fun. We hope you had fun today too. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kristen. And I'm Rich. And go, go find, find those, those fish. fish.
here today with Utah Fish Finder and Fads and Fashions at the Valley Fair Mall, and they have graciously agreed to sponsor our show, so we appreciate that. You're so welcome. We wanted to check out their NASCAR apparel, which they have a lot of. Tell us a little bit about it. Yes. Well, for instance, we have these jackets, NASCAR right. jackets. This Which one is a Tony one. Stewart. Let me try this on. jacket. Look at this jacket. There is yeah. so much detail, embroidery. How much is this? Okay, normally we sell this for $160. Mm -hmm. Right now we're doing a special for 75% off. It makes up $40. Oh and, my gosh. And, and change, you know, so. this is full of embroidery and detail. This is a beautiful jacket. That's a steal. You cannot find a jacket of this quality for that much. And you also, I see, you have some cars back here, yes. which my son would love. If you have a son that loves racing, which mine does, they really love this. Yes. Tell us about these. So these are die cast cars that are to scale models of the actual car. Okay. Um, the front opens, you can see that detail. Okay. The back opens, it's, um, and they are, um, yeah, they're, they're very collectible. They are. So they're we're nice. doing these, um, they're normally $90. We're doing them at $25. That's amazing. So, so you yeah. can get a couple of them for that price. Yeah. The they, price is unbeatable. Right. And they also have a lot of other stuff. They have like these little fun, creepy, crawly jewelry here. This is a keychain. This is a necklace. And they have Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley, Coca Cola, Betty Boop, all kinds of different memorabilia. So if you're looking for a unique gift, this is the place to come. Fads and fashion, right Valley here. Fair Mall. Yep. Angie's the manager. See her, she'll hook you up. Thanks.